All right, good evening everyone. Welcome sa mga nandito physically sa chapel. I'd like to greet everyone also sa Lark. Um, hope to pray with you guys here sa chapel also soon. So tonight, um, we will be continuing on sa series natin sa 1 Corinthians and then um, we will learn about how Paul is dealing with um, itong uh, Corinthians na tinitingnan niyang um, mga anak niya din in the faith. And particularly, we will tackle verses 14 to 21 dito sa chapter 4. So if you guys have your Bibles with you, physically or digital, kindly um, turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 14 to 21. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach them everywhere in every church. Some are arrogant as though I were not coming to you, but I will come to you soon if the Lord wills, and I will find out not the talk of these arrogant people, but their power. For the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. What do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod or with a love in a spirit of gentleness? Before we dive deeper into our text for this evening, let us come to God in prayer. Aming banal na Diyos, maraming salamat sa um, itong pagkakataon ulit to approach uh, you in your throne of grace and lifting up all our petitions to you. Um, Lord, uh, would you give us a heart that is fully dependent and surrendered to you and knowing that you are sovereign and wise and that you will answer our prayers according to your will. And so, Lord, we entrust to you everything, itong mga requests namin. And also, um, as we pray also with um, thankful hearts later for Thanksgiving um, and praises, Lord, I pray na kami po ay ma-amaze sa nagbibigay ng blessing more than the blessing itself. Thank you, Lord, for this time. May you open our eyes and our hearts to understand your word for us this evening. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. May, may echo. <laughs> Alright. Uh, sana hindi po kayo madistract doon. So for the past week sa series natin dito sa First Corinthians, we have learned that Paul has been confronting itong Corinthians sa uh, um, sinfulness nila, mostly rooted in pride. Um, dagdag na rin natin na sobra na yung pagka-worldly ng Corinthians. And actually, mahaba-haba pa to. Four chapters pa lang tayo. And we will see as we move along that Paul we con will continue to confront several other sins na meron itong church sa Corinth. At makikita natin this time itong site ni Paul dito sa text natin for this evening na very personal na siya dito. Um, ipapakita niya dito yung pagka-compassionate and firm niya like a father to a child. And he was willing to exhort, he was willing to comfort, and charge each one as a father does his own children. Sabi sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 to 12, For you know how, like a father with his children, God, who calls you into his own kingdom. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, like planting and watering God's field, the church. He also talked about pastors in the church as construction workers laying a foundation and building upon it carefully. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, um, last week, ito, we learned that pastors are servants, stewards, or dispensers of the mysteries of God. Now here in verse 14, si Paul, he picks another metaphor. 
He tells us about his relationship to the church in this image. And this is him as a compassionate and affectionate father. All right. Alam niyo ba kung ano ang nangyayari sa isang um, bata, uh, sa isang child, kapag matagal itong hindi na didiscipline? Um, the child becomes arrogant, di ba? The child becomes careless. Um, the child becomes clueless or naive. Uh, medyo, minsan... Discipline. So, importante na, from time to time, dinidiscipline ng mga tatay yung anak nila. Now, imagine a church without church discipline. Grabe, di ba? Soon, that church will be tolerating sin at some point. Baka ma-abuse pa nga yung grace ni God in their ministries. And furthermore, without church discipline, madadamage ng sobra yung spiritual state ng mga members. That is why churches need biblical care and fatherly guidance from their pastors. Kasi kung mahal talaga ng pastor yung flock niya, they will do whatever it takes to protect their spiritual children from danger, even if it means showing tough love through discipline. Diba tayo? We say tough things to the people we love. We probably wouldn't say the same to those na hindi natin kilala, to those na hindi tayo intentionally nagpapakita ng love or care, but to the people we love, we will say hard things. Kailangan ng tough love, especially if kailangan makarinig ng truth about itong tao to uh, regarding their behavior. And the title of our Devo tonight is simple, Tough Love. And churches must heed the warnings of their pastors. Blessing itong ganitong klaseng guidance sa totoo lang. Dapat di natin dinidismiss yung ganitong way of love. For this will help us in our sanctification. Kaya yung message ko para sa atin tonight is simple. Appreciate God-given pastors who exercise fatherly care and discipline in the local church. And we will be considering two points para lalo natin maintindihan ito. The first one is fatherly care and the second one is fatherly Discipline. Let us consider the first point, fatherly care. <coughs> Excuse me. In verses 6 to 13, itong chapter 4, um, Paul really nailed the Corinthians. Niril talk na niya. Dinil niya yung pagiging conceited, arrogant, at pagka-immature ng Corinthians. He said some hard things to them. Pero he wants to make sure na um, maintindihan nila yung motivation niya behind saying these things. Um, ito ay dahil mahal niya sila and he cares about them. Kung sa umpisa pa lang wala nang pakialam si Paul sa Corinthians, um, hindi na siya nagsulat ng letter to them. But he did. And in verse 14, sinabi niya doon yung purpose niya. Sabi niya doon, I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Di ba whenever someone tries to shame another in a unloving way, um, it's because that person is trying to demoralize yung person na sinasabihan niya. Um, pero hindi ganito yung case kay Paul. When Paul warns the Corinthians and says hard things and shows tough love, it's always by showing them the truth about their sinful behavior para may expose ito at magampanan at maayos ito. And Paul derives no pleasure in shaming the Corinthians. Hindi niya sinasabi sa sarili niya na yari itong Corinthians sa akin, makakatikim to sa akin. Certainly, the things that he said to them were bound to bring shame. Um, kasi masakit talaga makarinig ng rebuke. <laughs> masakit makarinig ng warning. Um, pero yung purpose dito ni Paul is um, to really build them up and to admonish them as his beloved children. His purpose is to warn them that they are getting themselves into trouble or danger. So Paul warns the Corinthians of their behavior out of a deep love for them. In the same way when God gave his commandments, it is important to realize that they are given to us for our good. God simply wants to protect his children from the effects of, uh, effects of sin, and he tells us exactly in his word how to achieve it. 
minsan hindi natin naiintindihan um, para tayong yung mga um, teenagers na hindi pinapayagan ng magulang to go out um, to late night parties. Iniisip natin agad na killjoy yung tatay natin, na ayaw niya tayo to have a good time. At kapag mag-disobey pa rin tayo, syempre we have to be disciplined. Kailangan ma-warning nga na tayo because this is for our own good. Protection din ito from further and deeper sin issues. Kaya dapat tingnan natin na godly warnings are healthy means for a believer's sanctification. This is what Paul is doing to the Corinthians and Paul has the right to warn the Corinthians because he is their spiritual father. Sabi doon sa verse 15, For though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So from just a concern, now to a deep compassion for the Corinthians. Yung words na ginamit na dito, itong guides in Christ. Ito yung mga nag-tutor or nagturo um, sa Corinthians ng way of life. Ito yung mga teachers, ito yung nag-support at nag-guide sa pamumuhay nila. So technically, okay itong mga guides na ito. Pero yung sinasabi ni Paul dito is, he is more than just a guide or a tutor. And he wants the Corinthians to understand that he is their spiritual father who has compassion and a deep connection with them. Since a guide might not have a deep love and connection to a child or to children, but a father does. Think about it this way. Tayo, we have been blessed with countless guides in Christ um, via online, di ba? Um, we have learned from great theologians such as John MacArthur, Paul Washer, John Calvin, R.C. Sproul, at yung mga iba pa nag-open sa atin ng um, Calvinism and then later on to reform theology. Pero can we honestly say that we have a deep connection with them? Kilala ba ako ni Paul Washer? Kilala ba ako ni Steve Lawson? Hindi, hindi di ba? So wala tayong connection. Wala silang deep connection to us. So sino sa Christian life natin ang may malalim na connection at kilala tayo personally at kaya magpakita sa atin ng compassion, patience, at grace sa pag-alaga sa atin. This is none other than our pastor. Siya yung merong connection sa atin. At mas may timbang yung relationship natin with PX compared to the countless guides in Christ that we have. Kaya blessing talaga sa church ang pastors na merong fatherly care toward their flock. Mas mababantayan tayo, mas magaguide tayo, mas ma rebuke tayo, at mas matutulungan tayo sa sanctification. So just like Paul, special yung relationship niya with the Corinthians kasi he gave the Corinthians their birth in Christ. Siya yung nag-introduce sa Corinthians ng gospel at siya yung nag-lead sa kanila to Christ. Kaya siya yung spiritual father ng Corinthians. And because he is their spiritual father, dapat lang na irespeto siya at dapat lang tularan siya ng Corinthians. Kaya sa verse 16, sinabi niya doon, I urge you, be imitators of me. And then later on, pinadala niya si Timothy um, na sinabi niyang beloved and faithful child niya in the Lord to remind them of their ways in Christ. So because of Paul's fatherly rights and responsibilities toward them, he calls the Corinthians to imitate him. A good father recognizes that whether it is intended or not, his child will imitate him. So Paul seeks to set the example for the Corinthians. Paul sets himself as the model. But how can he say this? Um, yung etong imitate me. Isn't this a case of pride? Isn't this a little conceited? Not at all. Paul could say this because he was an imitator of Christ Jesus. So to follow Paul was to follow one who was following Christ. That doesn't mean na si Paul gusto, gusto niyang i-worship siya ng Corinthians. What it does mean is that Paul's life was an example of how a Christian ought to live. A life that is lived lovingly for the sake of others. A life that sacrificially offers themselves in doing the will of God. 
kasi we all tend to to imitate um, yung mga madalas nating nakikita. We all tend to follow the patterns of worldly leaders, di ba? Yung mga astig. And the Corinthians did too. They shifted their focus away from Christ and onto the worldly aspect of their individual leaders. Rather than emulating yung Christ-like qualities of these leaders, they let their allegiances lead to various divisions and contentions in the church. At na-recognize ni Paul yung error na to. So he sent Timothy to remind them of his teachings and the importance of walking in obedience to the Lord. Notice na hindi sinabi ni Paul na si Timothy yung magiging pastor nila. Timothy is just to do one thing. He is to serve as a reminder. He is to be an example in his life or how the Corinthians ought to live. So that when they see and hear Timothy, nakikita din nila si Paul at naalala at naririnig nila yung teachings ni Paul um, at yung pagturo niya ng way ni Christ when he was among them. So kahit wala si Paul sa Corinth mis- mismo at this time, we can still clearly see Paul's fatherly care toward the Corinthians. Hindi niya, nila, hindi niya uh, sila hinahayaang malagay sa panganib at iwanan sila sa sins nila kasi Paul longed to see the Corinthians conform their behavior to Christ. And this applies to us as well. Kaya yung mga warnings, yung rebukes, ay napakagandang tool para sa pag natin ng holiness. Kaya huwag tayong magugulat at magiging defensive when we receive the, these hard things. Especially kapag nakikita na ng pastor natin na medyo nagiging worldly na tayo, parang yung mga Corinthians. Kaya yung first challenge ko for us is this. Seek and accept godly counsel. It is good for us to find other Christians whose godliness we can imitate. Yet it is also good and important to put sin to death in our own lives. And seek to obey the Lord para naman maging mabuting example din tayo to others at ma-point natin sila kay Christ. Just like Timothy, just like Paul, yung spiritual walks nila match their talks. They practiced what they preach. And so Paul qualifies the lifestyle and teaching that Timothy would represent to the Corinthians. Kaso nga lang may problema. Yung Corinthians ang problema. Verse 18, some are arrogant as though I were not coming to you, sabi ni Paul. Yung Corinthians, they were arrogant and conceited, arguing that Paul would only send Timothy, but would never dare to show his face personally. Sa Corinth then, there were some leaders and their followers na talagang oppose kay Paul. Actually, nakita natin to sa mga previous chapters, um, na question at dinideny pa nga nila yung apostolic authority ni Paul, di ba? So dahil sa pag kasi ng mga Corinthians sa worldly wisdom, yung, yung mayabang talaga sila. And hindi din tayo again exempted dito. There are times that we behave like the Corinthians. Umiiral yung pride natin kapag feeling natin na credible tayo sa eyes ng world. Um, dahil dito, feeling natin uh, kapag may mga accomplishments na tayo na may tendency na we look down on others. Especially here sa church, feeling natin kapag mas maganda yung trabaho natin, mas accomplished tayo, we look down on our, our, our brethren and even to our pastor. We have to be careful when we start acting like this. Check natin yung hearts natin. Baka yung mayabang na nga tayo tulad ng mga Corinthians. Sabi ni Warren Worsby, and I quote, A fleshly Christian is often a bragging Christian, but there is no demonstration of God's Spirit in his or her life. End quote. <clears throat> the Corinthians are acting like brats. They defied the one who was their spiritual father. And then there were times, uh, and then there are times that a father has to resort to discipline, especially kapag ganito na yung mga children niya in the faith. Kasama ito sa job description niya. He must exercise discipline over his children. Which leads me to my second point. Fatherly discipline. Verse 19, But I will come to you soon, if the Lord wills, and I will find out not the talk of these arrogant people, but their power. Paul warns the Corinthians that he will be coming soon to see if they really had the power they claimed, and he would not allow the, the arrogance to remain unchallenged. Minamaliit na ng Corinthians kasi si Paul. Feeling kasi nila mas powerful na yung 
yung position nila because of their learnings at feeling nila angat na sila dahil sa allegiances nila to powerful leaders. And Paul's visit would prove these powers worthless. We also see Paul affirming that he is under the leadership of Christ. Sabi niya, he will visit only if the Lord wills. But if he is permitted by the Lord to come, he will put those who boast to the test. He will see whether or not they are just words. Because as Paul stated in verse 20, the kingdom of God does not consist in talk but in power. <clears throat> it is not all about words. It is about measurable, definable demonstrations of Christ's power. Sinabi din ni Paul ito sa chapter 2 in verses 4 and 5. My speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Essentially, Paul wants us to realize that it doesn't matter how well-spoken a person may be. For good speech is powerless to save, and thus is not the vehicle through which the kingdom of God comes. Yes, okay lang na i-improve ng preachers yung communication skills nila, okay lang na um, mag-aral sila at itry nila maging eloquent. However, if they are not proclaiming Christ and Him crucified, their teaching cannot be used by God to powerfully change hearts and build up faith in the gospel. Sabi ni John Calvin, and I quote, How small an affair is it for anyone to have skill to pray eloquently, while he has nothing but empty thinking. End quote. How things look and sound is not evil right away. However, we must be cautious, for appearances can be deceiving. The eloquent worldly wisdom valued by some Corinthians, which led to Paul being criticized, has nothing to do with God's true power in the cross of Christ and the gospel to save sinners. Worldliness na kasi yung pattern na pinapakita ng Corinthians dito. Kaya di na pinapalagpas ni Paul ito and ididisiplin na niya yung mga to. Sabi niya, verse 21, What do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod or with love in a spirit of gentleness? Take note that Paul puts the question not merely to those who are arrogant, but to the entire Corinthian church. Everywhere in the congregation, everyone in the congregation shares the blame for the damage that divisiveness and arrogance have caused. Because of their corporate responsibility, sama-sama sila dito, they must now respond to Paul's question. And Paul, speaking like a father, leaves it up to the Corinthians to determine kung paanong manner yung gusto nila, nila na dumating siya. With a rod ba? Or with a love in a spirit of gentleness? Actually, yung rod um, has various uses in scripture. Um, but one of its uses, which seems to be yung meaning dito, is for chastisement. Ito yung infliction ng pain um, para maridirect yung heart nung dinidiscipline. And as an apostle, Paul had the authority to receive members into the church and he also had the authority to exercise church discipline among the members. So God has given the church the means of correction through discipline. And Paul lets the Corinthians know that he would be faithful to carry it out. Plus, Paul recognizes that even in administering strict discipline in the church, love pa rin dapat yung guiding force ng lahat ng Christian actions. So discipline, in a sense, is also loving, but painful. God not only guides His children through encouragement, but if necessary, through correction. Sabi sa Hebrews 12, verse 6, For the Lord disciplines the one He loves, and chastises every son whom He receives. So if we are His children, God will correct us to see that we continue to grow. Like any good parent, he will try the gentle and easy way of encouragement first. But if we choose not to respond to the easy way and do what offends Him and harms our relationship with Him, God will even bring more painful correction because He loves His children so that He doesn't want, I, so much that He doesn't want us to keep harming ourselves with the effects of sin. 
So self-check lang. Let me ask all of you this. Meron bang sinisik si God to correct something in your life now? Perhaps a sinful habit, a sinful attitude, or adjustment ba ito sa priorities? Kailangan natin lahat to. Kailangan natin ng discipline. Because we are all sinners who are works in progress. And so for my last challenge, whenever we are being disciplined, we must cooperate and endure God's loving hand of discipline. Masakit to, pero kailangan natin mag-persevere. In Hebrews 12, verses 7 to 8, it says there that it is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. So matakot na tayo kung hindi na tayo nakakaramdam ng discipline from the Lord. Kung kayo ay church member ng isang local church, expect God's loving hand of discipline through our pastor, through elders that faithfully administer church discipline for the sanctification of the church. In closing, kaya meron discipline dahil sa sin. It left us miserable, without life, guidance, separated tayo from our Heavenly Father, para tayong orphans in a dying world. But God has sent His Son, Jesus, to live with us as the God-man and pay the ultimate price, His own life, that sinners might become members of His family. And for those who receive and trust in Him, He has made sinners His children. Our Heavenly Father has adopted wayward orphans and has given them spiritual blessings in the family of God. And as a good father, he guides his children in this earthly life using God-given pastors to prepare the church for the coming of Christ. Kung si Paul mayroong pinaplanong bisita dito sa Corinthians, si Christ meron. At kailangan ma-prepare tayo through discipline at sanctification. Let's pray. Panginoon, maraming salamat sa gabing ito. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us here. Um, uh, some of us, Lord, uh, we've been through um, testings and trials, uh, discipline siguro throughout this week. And we ask, Lord, for your grace and for your loving hand to direct us to your will. Um, help us, Lord, to keep confessing and repenting our sins that are being exposed. And if not, if hindi namin to nakita, Lord, uh, may you use our pastor, even our church members, mga churchmates namin to point out itong sin na to and help us, Lord, not to be defensive, but to accept it and embrace it and cooperate and endure the painful but loving hand of your discipline. Lord, thank you. May you hear our prayers tonight. In your name we pray. Amen.